Hello everyone, welcome to Entrepreneur Finance. I am excited to start this semester and share this course with you. Today we're going to start with Chapter 1 and I'm going to go over the basics of this course, what you can expect, and also what is unique about this course. Without further ado, let's dive right in. In each chapter, we're going to start with the learning objective. So as this is the first chapter, we're actually going to talk about how you, what you can expect and also how you prepare for this course. Um, something that is unique about this course is that this is a case based course and therefore um, some of you may have encountered this before and this may be the first time working extensively with cases for some of you. So we're going to go over those for all of us. So first of all, why do we use cases? One of the gaps that we have identified when we talk to alumni and employer is that students um, don't have a whole lot of practice in applying their theory in real life situations. And cases is particularly well suited to bridge that gap for students. Um, Another thing that students struggle with when they go to work is that they find out that the problems that they encounter at work are very different from problems that they find in a textbook. Because in, in a work situation or in a real life situation, we don't have all the information that we want. So dealing with imperfect information is something that um, takes practice. Uh, Another thing that is uh, that goes hand in hand with imperfect information is dealing with situations that are ambiguous. There is no right answer. So unlike in a textbook question where students do the calculations and they say, did I get the right answer? In real life, we don't have the right answer. But what is important is for us to learn skills and most important is to develop your own practice, your own process that enable you to make decisions and deal with situations where you do not have all the information and you're dealing with a lot of uncertainties. So the skills that you're going to develop in this class include analytical, analytical thinking and reasoning skills. These are the skills that you see in almost all job postings. So the question, so this is some, after this class, you have plenty of practice. Um, critical thinking and analytical thinking are especially important when we are dealing with imperfect information. And then something that all employers emphasize is your ability to communicate. So you'll be doing a lot of um, writing, um, not extensive research writing, but business style writing. So you need to articulate about um, the case and I'll go over those um, in detail next. But I want to go back to um, in terms of making decisions and analyzing situations. So because we are, there is no correct answer, to any of the situations that you see in a case, the emphasis is really for you to develop your own decision-making process. President Obama wrote an article describing how he approached the toughest decisions. Uh, obviously, the decision he faces or he faced were a lot more critical and had much, much greater consequences for a large number of people. But a lot of the decisions that you make will have a lot of consequence for you personally and your friends and family. So here are some of the things that he suggested. He says, when you have a tough, almost unsolvable decision to make, you don't just want people to tell you what you want to hear. So that's why you, you'll be working in teams. Your teammates are going to tell you things that may be very different from your own thinking. These last three paragraphs that he wrote, I absolutely love. He says, why I could not guarantee the outcome, I was confident in making the decision. This is the goal that I want you to have at the end of this class. He says, looking back, the number of complex situations I had to adjudicate seems remarkable. Of course, because he's the president of the United States. But he also said the truth is that regular Americans go through our days, we face countless decisions, a reality made even more acute by the pandemic that we are experiencing. We are constantly assessing how to act and what to do, carefully weighing the safety of each choice. It can be exhausting. 
So how do we deal with it? He says the best we can do is to find a framework that help us consider our choices. So this is what I want you to develop in this class is to develop a framework for you to make your own decisions. We, knowing that there may not be one perfect answer. We don't know what the right answer is. So as he said, that way we can rest a little easier knowing that we did the best we could in the circumstances come what may. It is not always clean and straightforward, but as my mother would say to me, the world is complicated, bro. That's what, that is why it's interesting. So that's another reason why we use cases. So what can you expect from a case-based class? First, the main distinction between a case-based class and a regular lecture-based class is that you are the creator of knowledge and you are the discoverer of insight. So in this class, you're the one who will say, oh, that's what that meant. Or, ah, now I got it. That's when you get, that's when you are creating knowledge and you are creating insight. I am going to be your guide and your facilitator. I will not be telling you precisely how to get there. I'll help you find your own framework. Case learning is a very social uh, endeavor and it requires you to participate actively. So, and um, whether or not we're doing the case discussion in class or whether we are doing case discussion online, um, that is equally important um, as the pandemic has changed the culture of work so much that a lot of you, when you go to work, you can expect to be working, even if not yourself remotely, that some of your teammates will be anywhere in the world and you will need to cooperate and make decisions together and solve problems together um, remotely. So whether or not it's synchronous, asynchronous, or face-to-face, -face, we'll need to master all those skills together. I'm gonna to introduce something called a three-read model. So again, these videos are not a substitute for the textbook. So this video, I really intended to highlight the textbook and then um, encourage you to go read deeper into the textbook. This three read model is designed by Professor Meg Vega and she recommends this as the case reading studying method. But this three read model actually works very well for studying your regular classes and it also really well for preparing for corporate meetings. Um, it may be early for some of you, but for other of you, the corporate meetings are gonna be a fact of your life very, very soon. So what is this three read model? So first, the first read, this takes very little time. So just a few minutes, three, five, six minutes. And you, for the cases, you read the hook. This is the, this is typically the most important part. And this, uh, this gives you the, it hooks you in. So it should engage you to, to make you want to read the rest of the case. And this also applies to your own writing. The first thing you write, the first thing that people read should be so engaging that they want to read the rest of what you, your report or the rest of your analysis. And then in each paragraph, you just read the first few sentences. So the idea is to get a gist of what the case is about. Very important is to write down the problem that you identify on the margin of the book. If you're using a ebook, then make sure that you write it, write it on um, your notebook. Or if you are doing everything on your computer, open a Word document and jot down the problem associated with the case. Using your own words is very important in here. So we didn't say highlight, we say jot down, meaning using your own word. Again, this whole process should take five to six minutes. The second read is the big one. So this is where you're gonna spend a lot of time. So imagine you're, doing, you're preparing for a meeting at work. The, fir the first read is similar to getting an email. You just get, get an overview of what is expected and then you put it on your calendar, you write down on your notes, organize it so you know what you need to do. And then when you are preparing for it, this is your real preparation. You need an uninterrupted time, half an hour to an hour. You want to read the entire case very slowly and carefully. And what is important in this part is for you to 
identify the really, really good nooks. So take really, really good nooks. The nooks should identify the individuals, the protagonists, who are these people, what are their names, how are they related to each other, what is the situation, what are the situations that they find themselves in, and then make connection, this is very important, to finance theory or your personal or your personal experience. So in this particular class, um, each chapter is organized around a topic. So the cases are related to the topic at hand. So the situations can be complex, but the central problem or the central theme that you want to take away from the case typically has to do with the current topic of the chapter. This is an, another thing that is very important is remember we're dealing with a real life case. So you'll find that the case does not have all the information that's necessary for an analysis as identified by the textbook because this is not quote a textbook case. This is a real life case. So you want to write down all the explicit and implicit assumptions. So know that a lot sometimes the protagonist may not know that they're making an assumption, but they behave as though those assumptions are valid and it's important for you to be able to detangle that, to unearth that, and then identify any missing information. So you want to know the known knowns and know the known unknowns. So knowing what you don't know is very is also very important. Okay. Then you list your alternatives and then each of their pros and cons. I'll go a little bit more in depth in a minute about um, different types of cases. For most of the cases, you'll, you'll need to do financial analysis. Um, so this class is actually arranged such that the first four chapters, um, you will not be doing a whole lot of spreadsheet analysis yet. The first four chapters, a lot of the cases are more qualitative cases and they have a lot of ambi ambi ambiguity. And the reason is to get you um, acclimated or get you introduce you to case analysis. So the first few chapters to focus is really for you to get used to doing case analysis and then we'll get into a lot of in-depth financial analysis using Excel. Some of the cases come with questions and those questions are designed to help you focus on the important areas or the important problems that is being um, addressed in the case. Those case questions are not substitution for doing a, um, a proper case analysis or write-up. They are really there to help you highlight the situation. Now that you're done with the second read, the third read is something that you do just before class. Um, so this could be just before you meet with your team to discuss if, if you're doing this asynchronously um, or if you're doing this at work. This is so you do the second preparation. This is the, the huge preparation that you do. And then just before you met with your team, this is what you do your third read. What you do is just go over the, the, the case very quickly, you know, the few sentences in each paragraph just to jog your memory of the people the situation and very, very importantly is the notes that you jot down. Remember, you want to be writing down all these materials as you go along and in your own words. So write, doing your own writing is extremely important. Now that you know about the three read method, now let's take a look at the type of cases. There are two major types of cases. The first is the decision type case. A decision case is a is a situation where there's a problem and you want to find out what caused the problem. So for a decision case, it's important for you to identify the problem and the problem usually involves a decision that you have to make or the protagonist has to make and you are trying to help the protagonist. So you want to find, you want to identify the problem, you want to identify the causes of the problem. So what, what, why are there a problem? You want to list the alternative solutions. And this part is the most important, is to select a criteria for evaluating those, those solutions and determining 
which criteria is the most important in this situation. So this is how this is the decision making process framework that we are, that you are trying to develop or you will be learning to develop in this class. So the criteria can be different for each situation. I will um, I'll pick two criteria that are very common in business. So a business may be at a um, at a at a um, turning point, and the, the the entrepreneur may have to decide whether or not to seek outside funding to grow the business, or they should um, rely on their own funding um, and not expand. So the criteria in this case will be growth uh, versus risk versus control. Those are the criteria. And each alternative that you come up with will have will will have different will will fare differently under each criteria. So for example, seeking outside funding will definitely enable will 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 enable growth. So you have a high score under the growth criteria, but you may have a low score under control because now you have to share the business with another person. So that's, that's the solution and the criteria, and you want to an analyze the strength and, strength and weakness of each alternative under each criteria. In terms of why, so why is, uh, uh, what is the importance of each criteria? That is situational. So to determine, to assign the importance to each criteria requires you to step into the shoes of the entrepreneur. It requires you to step into the, the situation of the case. Because for some finder, founders, growth may be more important. For another founder, control may be more important. So this is, there's no right or wrong answer. So you have to read the case and infer from the case which criteria is important for this particular uh, situation. And then finally, based on your analysis, you want to make recommendations. And the recommendation would, would, would determine which alternative are you recommending and also suggest how you would implement that alternative. So this is the typical um, uh, outline of what a write-up on a decision case would be. So the textbook has examples of this, uh, of write-up, so you should definitely um, study the textbook and look at what are the recommended structure of a case analysis. Another type of case is called a descriptive or illustrative case. These cases, um, the protagonist is not at a central decision point, but rather is describing events that has happened. So the case tells you, told you what had happened. You don't, you're not trying to solve a problem, but rather you're trying to infer from the case things that you have learned. So this is a knowledge created, creating situation. So you want, to, you want to summarize the facts. So what happened? What inferences can be drawn? And when you draw those inferences, it's important to connect them to finance theories. Um, so, for example, um, sometimes your analysis may conclude that given the information that the protagonist ha had at, the point, at that point in time, they make the right decision. Or you may identify red flags that these are, you, you may identify things that the protagonist should have recognized, but they did not take them into account in the decision making and therefore the outcome of the case is the way it is. So each case is different. Sometimes they did everything right and things still turn out bad poorly. Or they could have missed a lot of red flags. They make horrible decisions, but they were lucky and things turn out okay. So every case is unique and every case is different. So you want to evaluate the action, as I said, the, um, in the case and it, it sometimes very, one thing that's very important is when you evaluate the action, do not let the outcome justify the action. So again, they may have a good outcome despite taking poor actions, or they may have a poor outcome despite taking all the correct actions. So you want to evaluate the action themselves. And 
then draw your own conclusion and reflection. So your conclusion may be they took the right action and what they expect to happen happened and therefore the outcome was as expected. Or it could be what we talked about earlier. Um, they make the right decisions but something unexpected happened um, and therefore it was not successful but their decision process was still correct. So the conclusion is very important and, and yet there's no um, Again, there's no correct answer. It's your analysis of the case. I look forward to an exciting semester with you. Um, there will be a lot of learning and a lot of exploration. And I'll see you again soon.